Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We have these great tail cone retainers, and what they do is they hold your rocket engine inside your rocket, and they simply screw on. And it holds the engine to prevent it from coming out of the back end of the rocket. Um, what I wanted to do was to show you how to install these because there's a critical distance that this tube has to hang out the back and also where that back centering ring can be positioned. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, if you're wondering, this rocket here is actually a plan and we released it in Pika Flight newsletter number 667. Um, and I'll leave a link down here if you're interested in, in building it. Uh, we call it the Spaceship 2 ish because it's modeled after the spaceship too. So um, here's the video on how to install the tail cone engine retainer. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. When you get the tail cone retainer um, it comes with a template right here. So I'll kind of dry fit things. So we're going to have um, on the front end, and we need to leave just a little bit of gap so that we can put in a fiber or a, an epoxy fillet on that end. Um, then this is going to go here. Now, and then this is used to position that ring. So uh, if you're going to slide this all the way up to the end, and then that ring can go no farther back than that. Um, and then this tail cone um, retainer, so this is the base, and that's going to get glued on there like that. And then eventually this is going to be twisting it on. Uh, but we can't have that ring interfering. So that's why there's this right here to make sure that this ring doesn't inf interfere with the shoulder on the tail cone. Uh, we'll be glued like this. And I'll just mark it with a pencil. So you can kind of see. So it's going to go like right here. And I don't want to go any further back. I can go further forward, but not further back. Like that. And I think I'm going to do is just a little bit floppy. So I'm just going to tack it in place. Just a little bit of super glue so it doesn't move around on me. You can also go ahead and epoxy this onto the onto the motor tube. And then you can see that on this side it's got ridges, and that's where the epoxy is gonna go. So go ahead and smear some on that as well. I got epoxy all over those threads, so I'm gonna to have to wipe that off. <laughs> okay, so that's on. Make sure that I can see my pencil mark, which right there. All right, so I'm going to let that harden. Before I start gluing things up, um, I wanted to make sure that I could get this off because this is only gonna be on temporarily until we can place this into the tube. Um, so I want to make sure it goes on easily. So I'm going to use a little bit of grease. Now I'm using the super lube, but you can also use um, lithium grease or even Vaseline um, just to lubricate these threads a little bit. 
because I want it to be able to go on and off pretty quick and easy. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. All right, so this is gonna go into here. Um, so we're gonna need one bead of glue like right here and then another one right here. I think I'll, I'll put it right before the edge of the slot. Yeah, I've got a dowel that's long enough. Um, I also want to put in my motor mount motor just to make sure that it pushed out all the shot cord that I get this in at the right spot. I'll shove that in there as much as I can. Okay. Um, for this, instead of using the liquid epoxy, I'm going to use the G Flex um, because it's thicker and it will stay where I want it to stay. So like all epoxies, this one is a, well, not all epoxies, but most epoxies are a one-to-one -one mix. Um, so I'm just going to squeeze equal amount. The, the one thing that I do want to avoid is gluing the tail cone into the tube. So that's the important thing. That's why I want to be able to get it out. Uh, or get it off, um, you know, to unscrew it quickly. Okay, so take this and it's got to go in approximately that deep. So I'm putting my finger there. And going around the inside of the tube. Okay, so now the, that looks pretty good. Hopefully you can see something in there. <laughs> uh, now this back ring is the one that I worry about because I don't want to glue on my um, tail cone. So I'm going to want to keep it as far forward as possible. So I'm going to be painting it on a little bit more carefully. Lots. So I want to first get it past that line of epoxy without pushing that epoxy anywhere. Um, now I can see that pigtail is right there. So I'm going to rotate it like 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go in and then push it in like that. Now, uh, now I want to take off that tail cone just to make sure that it doesn't get bonded in there. And then I want to look on the inside. So now, it's, it'll probably want to rotate. So I need to find that front centering ring and I can feel it right here. So I'm kind of squishing this to make sure that this whole thing doesn't spin. And I'm just kind of looking at this to see if there was any epoxy on there and there wasn't. So that's a good thing. All right, so now I'm just kind of looking back here See if there's any epoxy around the outside that needs to be cleaned off, and it looks actually pretty good. Um, if there was any epoxy there, I want to clean that off. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to come back later and try to sand it, and it's going to be hard to sand. Um, I would probably have to use a needle file to get in there to make sure that that shoulder here. Um, goes in there fine. <laughs>